Welcome to Jim's review of the 2014 IS sedan, Lexus's newest redesigned model. And you can see now they've come up with two different versions of this vehicle, the luxury version and the F Sport version. There was four main objectives Lexus engineers had when they redesigned this model. The first and most paramount was to make this car fun to drive, which is a must in this segment. The second was to actually take the design of this vehicle and make it far more sportier and dynamic, which is what the owners come to expect as well in this segment. The third was to take the F Sport brand and elevate it to a new level and to go further than just skin deep like it was in the previous model. And we'll talk a bit, a bit more about that. And the fourth was to not take away the comfort that Lexus owners come to expect in these vehicles. Now we're gonna start with the IS250. This is actually the luxury version, which is the highest package that Lexus has to offer in this model. And you'll look at the design. We'll start with the design exterior here. This is probably the boldest expression I've ever seen Lexus come out with, with their l s design and this new spindle grille. And you start from the front here. You can see these beautiful, dramatic new character flow lines that start from the spindle grille and work their way right up into the A-pillar. You'll see the new daytime LED running lights, shaped like an L, part of their l s design. And it's also been separated from the headlight now. That's a Lexus first. You'll see the other lines that start from the front of the vehicle here and work their way all the way to the rear taillight lens. Okay, and it's kind of bow shaped, so it gives it that sportier, almost F1 type body shape. And then there's these little arrow foils that are located just behind the mirror here in the A-pillar and a couple of more in the rear tail ends. One of the things they try and achieve with these arrow foils is to tighten the airflow on either side of the vehicle. As you're driving at higher speeds, vehicles can become unstable. These vortices that these generate actually tighten the airflow on either side of the vehicle to keep it more stable. Gives it a better, more fun to drive experience. You'll also see that there's a lot more downforce on the vehicle now. They've redesigned it and brought the coefficient drag to 0.28 and they've increased the downforce on the vehicle. Again, improving stability. And one of the things they did to also add better stability was to change the suspension now. The multi-link suspension actually is designed to give the car 15% better traction on that tire as you're taking these fast turns. Very impressive. Some of the other character flow lines you can see start at the bottom of the rocker panel, work their way just over the rear wheel here and ties into this rear combination taillight again. So you can see that beautiful line. So they've really done a great job of smoothing and carrying these flow lines across the vehicle. Now we're getting a look here at the beautiful 18 inch aluminum alloy wheel that comes on the non F Sport package. Now in the rear, you can see what they've done here. They've got the dual exhaust, gives it a much sportier look. You got the Elf and S that carries right into the tail ends here and the lines that flow right into the trunk area here. So you can see a lot of little lines that sometimes you don't see until you get up close to the vehicle, but lots of attention to detail in this design, better than I've ever seen. Now we're just getting a look underneath the hood of the new 14 IS250. And this one, you'll see that it still has the same 2.5 liter V6 engine. It's a small block V6, still very efficient. Not a lot of changes as far as the horsepower goes, still 204, but lots of changes as far as how they actually position things in the vehicle now. With the longer wheelbase of the vehicle, they've increased it by three and a half inches. You'll find that a lot more of the weight, including the engine, is centered between the wheels now. You'll also find that there's a lot more laser welding. They've actually increased the laser welding significantly in the new model. That gives it better rigidity and better safety. The other thing they wanted to achieve and they, they were able to achieve actually is a 10% reduction in overall body weight because lighter means better agility and better safety and better braking. There's a lot of benefits to having the vehicle lighter while adding better safety features. You'll see the traditional fire blanket located underneath the hood here, okay, which is designed to protect occupants if a fire would ever break out under the hood. You have the protective cowl here, they've redesigned it. Okay, gives it a much be more beautiful and sporty look under the hood. Lots of rubber sealing all around the hood, like you typically find with Lexus, which keeps a lot of the dirt and debris out of this engine compartment, which gives it a better, longer life. And you, of course, you have still, okay, the hydraulics on either side. Okay, a nice little touch, okay, because you don't have to look for that little prop rod. Now, some of the other things I want to mention as we're in the exterior here is the standard heated windshield at the bottom here. An excellent feature when you have lots of ice and snow at the bottom of the windshield. That prevents the blades from sticking. Just up here, you'll see in these channels that traditionally have the little uh, plastic molds in here. Okay, they've actually laser welded this. This is a Lexus first. And that actually added more rigidity, again. And it takes away from that little 
you see those little plastic molds sometimes that tend to peel up or you get wear and tear with them or water that builds underneath them. You don't have to worry about any of that with these new laser welds that they've added in this area of the vehicle. Now they've redesigned the key for the IS this year. It's a much sleeker looking key. It's got the L finesse actually built into the key. Nice design. It is a smart key which allows us to simply walk up to the front doors uh, at any point in time and just simply pull the handle when we want to unlock the car, provided the key is within a meter. So we can just keep it in our pockets or our purses. When we want to lock the car, again, we just close the door and press our finger right on the handle here. There's a little indent there. And that's how we lock our cars. Now, if we happen to leave our key inside the vehicle and close the door and try and lock it, it'll give us that alert, preventing us from locking our keys in the vehicle. Now, what do we do if the battery ever runs out? Okay, and this is an important question to answer. When the battery runs out in these keys, there's actually emergency power built in, just behind the little L inside the key. So what we would do is we just simply push the little button that says push on the side. That allows us to slide out a real key. Once we slide this real key out, it allows us to open the door. Okay, there's a little keyhole there. And once we get into the vehicle, we simply take this key, hold it pressed against the ignition for two seconds while our foot is on the brake, and that will allow us to start the car. One of the other nice things you'll find about the Lexus glass, in addition to being thicker and quieter, which is something we come to expect with Lexus, it's also UV protected. And you'll notice just by simply looking at the color of my hand as it goes behind the glass, you'll see that green tint. That's the built-in UV protection. You actually get 90% protection in all the glass that filters it out and 100% on the windshield. Now, some of the notables in the rear trunk area here, they were able to achieve this generous trunk space of 10.8 cubic feet here by one of the design changes, which was the suspension. They've also added an optional 60-40 split rear seat, an excellent new addition to this lineup. Now, as a security feature, you'll also notice on the back of these split seats, there's a lock and unlock feature. When I lock these seats, it doesn't allow anybody to fold them down from inside the vehicle anymore. A perfect situation if you need to valet your car. Other notables on the rear trunk include our trunk release button on the right here, our backup camera for the models that are equipped with it like this, which from time to time you'll need to give it a little clean off, and our little keyhole that lets us into the trunk again. When the battery dies on your key, we can still slide out that little key and use it to get into our trunk if we need be. Now in the trunk, you'll also notice we have a few tie down hooks for luggage. When we're traveling, we can tie down our luggage so it doesn't slide around. And of course, underneath we have our spare tire with our jack located off to the side on the left side there. And on some tools that Lexus provides you on the right hand, a screwdriver, okay? And your bar that allows you to screw your bolts on and off to get your wheels fastened. Now, sitting in the back of the new Lexus IS, as we know, they've increased the wheelbase by three and a half inches, so now that has allowed for better leg space in the rear. And this is something that Lexus was always lacking in the back of the IS, and they've done a great job this time. Inside the armrest, you'll also find a couple of cup holders, okay, with holders underneath. Nice, simple design. Now, one of the other things I noticed when I got into the back seat is the comfort. It's a lot better than the last vehicle because it seems to have much more thigh support. They've increased the thigh support in the front and rear of the seat. You also have the airflow. Okay, that's much better. So you have two ducts up top and two ducts underneath each seat. Now, as beautiful as the exterior of this vehicle is, it gets better. It continues inside the all new design. Okay, and the thought, the attention to details goes right into the interior. Part of the fun to drive experience includes the new seat positioning. It's actually been positioned lower now by 20 millimeters and the steering angle has been adjusted down by three degrees. And this is all in an effort to make you feel like you're driving a much sportier vehicle. Even as I get in the vehicle, I notice the seating. It's much more bolstered now. So I can sit in the seat much better. It holds me a lot nicer. And I even get better leg support through this uh, adjusted cushion length, which they've made longer for this model. Immediately you'll notice this beautiful LFA inspired mirror design with the integrated signal light and in this particular package you also have the blind spot monitor built into the mirror. So when we push the blind spot monitor button to activate it, 
We get the little lights that show up in either of the side mirrors. And that is what it actually alerts us to when there's a vehicle in our blind spot to be careful and not to make that lane change. And if we do have somebody in our blind spot and we try and make the lane change, you'll see that little light start to blink really quickly on and off telling us not to make the change. We have our auto closing up and down windows, auto up, auto down for all four of our windows. We have our lock and unlock over here with our window lockout protection when we have children in the car and we don't want them fiddling around with the windows. Our left and our right indicator lights to adjust the side mirrors with the mirror adjustment here in the center. Now in our packages that have the memory seating here, you'll see you have one, two and three seat positions you can memorize. Once we set our mirrors, our steering wheel and our seat in place, we simply hold the set button with the corresponding number that you want to program and you get that little beep that tells us that it's been programmed. Now, if you ever want to readjust it or reset it, we just make any minor adjustments, hold it again, set button and the number that we want to program, and then it's set. Our heated windshield, which is activated from inside, just on the left side of the console area. We have our park assist, which activates the park sensors in the front and rear bumpers. Again, this comes on packages like this luxury model and our rear sunshade. Just underneath at the bottom here, we have our hood release and our trunk release. With our emergency brake, right in the left where it says push on off, so we push to activate it, and we wanna deactivate it, we push it again and it pops right back up. Our odometer and trip meter button on the left here, that goes from trip A to trip B to our odometer. And just to the right, we have a little picture of our center cluster area where we can make it brighter or dimmer from either side here and adjust the lighting. Again, on this luxury package, we also have the power tilt and telescopic steering wheel, which adjusts right on the side here. Goes in and out, goes up and down, power. And you'll notice on the side of the seat here, we have our standard eight-way power adjustable seats. Give us a little bit of leg support here in the front. The back part of this one raises the whole seat up or down, or I can slide the whole thing forward or back to adjust for different lengths. This is where I can recline my seat forward and back, and we have our lumbar support here. And this is the same on both front seats. Just inside here, you'll notice the little auto feature, our parking light feature and our headlight manual on feature. At the bottom where it says O, that means off. We click it forward once. We just twist this little tip into the auto, which allows it to turn on and off automatically when we lock or unlock the car. And just above it, this is something we don't use too often, just our parking lights. It actually turns on the daytime running lights uh, on the bumper area. and our auto headlight is now manually headlight turned on at the top here. We have our beautiful new LFA inspired steering wheel design with our multitronic shifters on either side. Okay, we can downshift from the left side and upshift from the right side when we're in manual mode. Over here we have our modes which can allow us to select AM, FM or satellite, okay, the various modes in our, our radio modes or even Bluetooth if we have our Bluetooth connected. We have a volume up down button on the left side here and our selection. Okay, whether we're in radio or whether in BT, which is Bluetooth, we can adjust our selection from here. Just below that, we have our phone answer and hang up button for our Bluetooth feature. And this is where we can give voice commands to the vehicle. On the right side of the steering wheel, we have our selection for our little TFT display, which is located between the two clusters. That allows us to actually select different things like our information screen where we can check our current liters per 100, our fuel range, eco indicator telling us when we're driving eco-friendly, our tire pressure as you can see, and our gear position. If we shift it to the right, we now go into our compass mode. Further to the right, we now have our audio selection where we can select from Bluetooth audio. We can select AM, FM, all the various modes here. We have disc, we have USB. We can connect an iPod, auxiliary, okay, or AV. There's so many different modes in this new model, it's wonderful. We even have our little message screen when there's messages that the vehicle wants to give us, like a warning message. We need to get to a service station for any particular reason. There's multi pages here, which allows us to flip through the different pages of information when we're in these various screens. On the right side of our steering column here, we have our wiper control. The top one is the off. The one just below it gets us into the one swipe. Then we have a second touch, which gets us into the fast mode all the way up, shuts it off again. Now, if I want to activate my auto, I just push the little auto button on the tip of the control here, and you'll see the little auto light that activates. We can also control the sensitivity of the auto rain sensing wipers from the inner control right here. On the bottom right hand side of our steering column here, 
There's a little on off button we can push on the tip to activate the cruise. Once it's active, we can simply set it by pushing down on the button at the desired speed we've set it at. We can cancel by pulling it towards us or pressing on the brake pedal, or we can reset it by tapping it up once. As we move to the center of the vehicle, you notice this cockpit style design with this rising dash and it flows beautifully into the horizontal instrument panel. Now you'll also notice that with this design, they've come up with this beautiful sunk in screen that we're used to seeing on a lot of our other models. They've now incorporated it on the IS, which will prevent sun glare and make sure that you can always see your instrumentation and all the functions on that map screen much, much clearer. And the other part about this design and the center console, the way they've set it up, makes the vehicle feel much more snug, but at the same time, you feel quite roomy. And that's a brilliant design concept of this new IS. Starting from the bottom of the center console, you'll notice that the two cup holders are much better located than the previous model. Underneath the armrest, we have ample space and we have a second USB as a standard feature now. Plus, we have our little 12 volt insert where we can charge our phones. Our drive mode select is located just in front of that, which allows us to switch from sport mode to normal mode or eco mode, depending on what type of driver input we wanna give the vehicle. Our shifter has a beautifully new design short shifter with a nice little leather pouch at the bottom, giving it a very sporty look. And just above that, we have our heated and cooled seats. This being the luxury package has both and our little heated steering wheel button. Now the Mark Levinson is not part of this package, which is something we can get in our F Sport top packages or in some of our IS 350s. But a Lexus First is these new electrostatic switches for our climate control now. This is a Lexus First and it's a very, very smooth and easy way to adjust your temperature and it's dual so your passenger can do the same. Now, when you're in dual mode, the little light will come on indicating that we're using two different temperatures for the left and right side. When we shut off the dual, we can now control everything from the driver's side only. You'll also find some other nice features, okay, starting from the left, which is our auto feature for the climate control, or the off button where we can switch everything off, our manual fan speed adjustments, our mode where we can switch the direction of the airflow manually, our front defrost, our rear defrost, which also does our side mirrors at the very same time. Our recirculate button, preventing fresh air from coming in the car. Or our fresh air button, which allows fresh air into the vehicle. Our AC on off button. And just underneath we have our hazard lights. We're stopped on the side of the road for any emergency. Our airbag on and off lights. These are based on who is sitting as a passenger in the front. Now you'll notice here where it says passenger, underneath we have the airbag off light, which is currently lit up. There's also an airbag on light, which would light up if we had a passenger in the front seat who could safely withstand the impact of the airbag based on their weight. Over here on the left, we have our volume button, which turns the power on and off and adjusts the volume just like in pretty much every model. And on the right, we have our tune knob button where we can tune our different stations from left to right in the center. We have our insert where we can load our single disc CD. It's no longer a six disc. And that's due to the fact that most of us are using Bluetooth audio these days or a USB to load up all our music. Now over here to the right of the shifter, we have our second generation Lexus remote touch interface. And it kind of works like a mouse in your own home. You can move around the little mouse head here and just press down on it when you want to enter a feature on the center screen. At the top, we have a menu button which takes us into all the different screens that we can go into. To the right of that, we have the up down arrows that allows us to adjust for different items on different screens where we can move up or down. And the little home button to the right which takes us to the home screen on that main screen. Now, as we get to our main screen, you'll notice this is what we're looking at is our home screen. And when we want to make adjustments to the home screen, they've actually sectioned it off into three little boxes. So we have the top left, which is currently displaying our climate control. The bottom left is actually our audio screen is how it's set currently. And on the far right, which is half of that screen, it displays the map. Now, if we want to change what we see on this default home screen, which is activated by the home button just above our remote touch interface here, we can go to the top right hand side of the screen. We push this little button and it asks us what information would we like to display. We select it. So for example, if I want to show my audio screen and I want to move it to the top left, I just push my mouse now on the top left hand side and on my home screen now it's going to display the audio information on the top left. The bottom left is currently showing my climate control, but I can also change that by going back to that top right hand button on the main screen there. I click it with the mouse head. I can then select, for example, my fuel consumption and push that on the bottom left instead of my climate. 
and I probably want to keep my map on the right hand side. So I don't need to actually do anything. Once I've set this home screen the way I like it, it'll stay that way all the time. Now, if I want to go into my menu, which is also located just above the remote touch interface here, I can select what I want to see, like say for example, navigation there. And that's what will display on the whole screen now. If I want to go back to that little triple view, I then just push the home button located at the top right hand side of my remote interface. And that's what I'll see again, my home screen. Otherwise, I go back to menu and select whatever screen I want to see and it'll fill the whole screen. For example, climate. In my menu, this shows me all the various pages I can go into. My info screen, radio, media, phone, and my setup where I can do all my customization. Let's just briefly go into these screens one at a time. Starting with climate, this is where it shows us, gives us a little snapshot of what the climate control system is doing. Temperature on the left and right side. Our climate control is right now set on the auto feature, which basically sets its own fan speed and adjusts to the temperature that you've set it to be at. At the bottom of the screen, you'll notice you have the little auto button that's highlighted telling us it's in auto. The little off button where I can shut it off if I want with the mouse head instead of pushing it on the dash. And the AC is actually lit up right now in green telling me the AC is running, which is actually good to keep running year round. Now we'll go back to that menu screen. Now we have our navigation to the right of that. Navigation, something a lot of us are familiar with, but what they've done with this generation is they've made it much, much better because they've got it in a high definition now. So this is where you can adjust. You see the little plus and minus at the bottom there to zoom out if you want to get more map, or you can zoom back in if you want to use the little plus sign. Now we can also do the same with the up down arrows just above the remote touch interface. And that's a little shortcut. You can push the up down arrows and adjust in or out by pushing it in or out with the little up down arrows. At the top we see options here. In the options it allows us to adjust the different map modes. So if we want to do dual map, compass mode and map, okay, for example we'll press that one and then this is what it'll look like. We have a little compass on the right hand side with our map. We can go back to options and just hit map mode and map only and to get back to that full map screen again. Back into the menu we have our info screen here. The info screen can show us a couple of different things here. Uh, we look at the average speed we're traveling, the elapsed time, our cruising range, okay? We can even look at our past record, okay? And if we want to clear all this stuff and start fresh, we hit clear. It asks us if we want to clear all our consumption records, we hit yes, and it basically starts everything fresh again. Back to the menu, we have our radio screen that allows us to make any adjustments and actually keep it on the screen there. So if I'm adjusting a station up or down from my steering wheel controls, it'll always display right on that main screen there. I can also do it with my up down arrows just above the remote touch interface. And I can even do it with my mouse. So I can hit the little up down arrows on the screen with my mouse. Back to the menu, our media screen. Now the media screen is where we can put in a source like Bluetooth, auxiliary, AV, iPod, disc, or USB. And these are the all the little items that you'll find under your media screen. Different from the radio screen which only covers AM, FM, and satellite. Now our phone screen. The phone screen allows us to pair multiple phones to the vehicle via Bluetooth. And the first thing it asks us when we go into the screen is if we want to pair a phone now, we would hit yes. And then we would have to go to our handset and set it all up through the Bluetooth. One of the things you'll find is when you do pair your phone, it'll also pair all your contacts. The Lexus system also with certain smartphones will allow you to receive and send emails right from your screen. The last one is the setup screen here where we can do a lot of customization. For example, in the general screen here, you'll notice that you can adjust the unit of measurement from miles to kilometers. You can change the language from English to some of the other languages that are offered like French or Spanish. We can adjust the color of the buttons on the screen. We can adjust the keyboard layout. You can even customize images by inputting them on a USB, plugging them in under the armrest and downloading say pic pictures of your family into the system. And that's what you'll see as a startup image when the car starts. Your auto screen change we can shut on or off our selection sound our pointer sound and error sound which we can always turn on or off our center clock here nice little touch there with the new design now you'll notice when I start the car you'll immediately see the clock light up with those beautiful little LED lights inside it's an analog LED clock simple adjustments from left to right okay when I push the little button on the far right here it moves it forward if I use the button on the far left it spins the clock back the other way very user-friendly now, the detail flows right even over above the glove box area here. And you'll see the dark charcoal wood in this particular package. And there's your release for your glove box. And you can see they've made a very nice job of designing the inside of that, the little shelf inside. And we even have a little key there. So if we want to valet our car, we can actually use our key to lock it, which will prevent people valeting our cars from getting to our personal belongings. Now our visors here, you'll see we have little inserts for business cards. Just behind it, we have, of course, our vanity mirror. 
with the light that turns on as soon as you open it. We have on our center mirror here three different uh, garage door openers we can program and then we have our on and off button for our auto electrochromatic mirrors which we can turn on and off and they basically allow the mirrors to dim when somebody's driving behind you with their high beams on. Up here we have our map lights for either side, our tilt up down and our open and close for our moonroof and the same thing on the passenger side over here. Very nice layout. And for driver or front passenger comfort, we can always adjust our seatbelts up or down so it rests better on our shoulder. Now, some of the most impressive features on this 2014 IS are the ones you don't see. And by that, I'm referring to the safety features like the eight standard airbags that come on this vehicle, as well as the rear cross traffic alert that comes on this luxury package we've just looked at. And that can actually detect when a vehicle is just about to back out of a parking space and there's a vehicle approaching, it'll detect that and give you an alert. There's also the lane departure alert. That tells us when we're drifting out of our lanes without using a signal. Great safety feature as well, which comes on this luxury package. Now, if you're looking at how to fuel up your new IS, you won't have to look for a button inside the vehicle because it's this technology from the new GS, which is simply pushing okay, the lid. And the lid opens up and allows you to access. Now, the trick is that the doors have to be unlocked or this will not work. When the doors are locked on the vehicle and you push on this, it won't let you open it. Only when the doors are unlocked. Now that we've had a chance to get a really close up look at it inside, now it's time to get outside and see how fun it really is to drive. So here we are in our first test drive of the 2014 IS250. It's exciting. Everything just feels like it's in the right spot. It's very, very ergonomically laid out. My legs have lots of space. I have a nice grip on the steering wheel, better than the previous model. Nice attention to detail with the stitching. The seat's holding me in quite firmly, especially on some of these turns, which I really quite like. So you kind of feel snug, but you feel very roomy at the same time. I love the layout of the dash. I have a very clear picture of my screen so I can see things quite clearly even on a very sunny day like this. The visibility seems to improve quite a bit too. These mirrors give you a lot better visibility than the old ones. And I also feel that when I'm driving this car, even in my rear view mirror, I seem to get better visibility than the old model. So they've done a lot of improvements. My headroom is clearly better and I feel like I've got a bit more shoulder space as well which according to the measurements it should be. Now getting into some turns up here and I'm going to be able to push this a little bit harder just to see how this all feels. Wow, it really holds the road quite tight. Very different than the old model. I thought the old model was quite good on the cornering but this is even better. Now some of the engineering changes they made to make it feel this way were the improved suspension and of course that has allowed for better grip. 15% better grip to be exact on the tires. And that makes a big difference when you're taking turns like this. With the new braking system on this model, I also want to put the brakes to the test just to see how they feel and how the stability of the nosedive feels when I hit those brakes. Here we go. It doesn't seem to dive at all. It uh, really holds its composure when you brake hard. I like that. So now one thing I want to try here is the drive mode select. So I'm going to put it in sport right now. I just want to test the responsiveness. Yeah, clearly it's a lot more responsive. It also holds the RPMs. As I take my foot off the accelerator, it still holds the RPMs at a nice high RPM, so it gives you a nice response when you tap on the gas again. Let's move it back to normal now. Yeah, in normal you can see the RPM start to go down a bit lower, a little less responsive, which is what I would expect in normal mode. Now I'm going to try the eco mode and see how that feels. So quicker shifts at lower RPMs. It's still fairly responsive. I don't feel like it's underpowered in eco mode. This is actually quite impressive. Now I've been driving for several minutes now and I still, I've, I've taken notice of how they've angled this steering wheel a bit lower. Just, it does make me feel like I'm driving a much sportier car, even with this uh, slight difference in the lower seating. But it doesn't, doesn't feel uncomfortable at all. It's just nice, snug, and comfortable is how I would describe it. I love the short shifter. The short shifter on this is really easy to hold on to while you're driving. It actually gives you something to hold on to when you're accelerating hard and that, that's something drivers like in these sporty cars. Um, and of course my second generation, my remote interface touch here, very comfortable if you just want to rest your hand. It's shaped so that the palm of your hand sits quite comfortably on it. Currently in normal mode right now. And I'm going to start with Eco. I want to just check and see how the responsiveness is with Eco. And then I'm going to shift on the fly, because you can do this at any speed while you drive the IS. 
is shift from normal to eco or sport. That's really good actually. Great responsiveness in eco mode. I'm gonna work my way up to normal now and see how that feels. Still very responsive. Actually a little bit better, yep, there it is. And then last, we're gonna try our sport mode by clicking this to the right. I just shift that knob and turn it one click to the right. And now the dash turns red. It says sport, and yes, this is much, much more responsive than either of the other two modes. Wow, holds the RPMs real high just so that you still have that responsiveness. If you're about to go into a turn, it's designed to hold that RPM high so when you come out of the turn, you can simply hit the gas pedal hard and you'll have that responsiveness waiting for you so you can just re-accelerate as you get out of that turn. Very intelligent design with the transmission and the engine and it's very seamless. Now here I am going into some turns in sport mode. It feels very seamless and it's ready to go. After driving the 2014 Lexus IS250, I can say without a doubt, this is fun to drive. Lexus engineers have done a great job I can also tell you that this is probably going to be, in my opinion, a game changer for Lexus because this is the first time they've been able to blend this type of fun with this type of design. And in this class, these are things that are an absolute must. And Lexus, great job.